my my you know my whole ilk of um, filmmaking is to, to make it real, real action, and real things. You know, when I drive cars, I have cars driven to me and do crashes and like that. They're very realistic. It wasn't like a car drives off a cliff in a convertible and four people bail out of it and land on top of a moving train and jump off the train and get in boats and then steal wave runners and do a chase. <laughs> it's not, Wait, so it's you're not saying fine. you don't really like the Fast and the Furious movies is what I'm getting Not at all. Hey guys, in this video, we're going to have a brief discussion with uh, talking about stunts that are more realistic in films compared to just like the crazy over the top ridiculousness that you see in a lot of modern films. With me, my guest is stunt coordinator, uh, one of the top in the industry, Conrad Palmasano. This is some extraneous stuff from a video I did with him talking about Steven Skull and Gene LaBelle because he was there during that incident. Make sure to check out that video. But essentially, I wanted to put this video out and I wanted to ask you guys what you want me to ask Conrad because I'm going to have him back on. This is just like a small preview of kind of like some of the stuff that he could tell us, right? So he's going to be really cool to have back on. Post any questions below. We'll do a fun video with him in the future. I'm going to ask him all this stuff. Oh, one last thing I do want to mention. Check out that awesome uh, Rocky vs. Drago poster. Special shout out to the official Rocky artist, John Rivali. You can buy that and so many other cool pieces of art on his uh, website, iconsandart.com. Make some great last-minute Christmas gifts. Or if you're watching this after the holidays, it'll make great gifts just in general. So anyway, check that out. And uh, please help support the channel by hitting the like buttons, subscribing, and then sharing the video. And let's get on to this conversation with Conrad. I see you got a lot of Sylvester Stallone in your background there. Oh, he's awesome, man. Love Sylvester Stallone. I'll tell you, I had great times working with him. You know, we did uh, First Blood, for example. You know, oh, that First Blood, you yeah, way back in the day. That's awesome, man. You yeah, gotta have crazy. They, they turned him into an action star because before that he was just Rocky. Mm -hmm. Once he did First Blood, he became Rambo. Now he's an action star on many levels. I didn't come here to rescue Rambo from you. I came here to rescue you from him. Right. Especially when part two came out. I mean, he that's the ultimate. That was that's part two right there. That I had that toy as a kid. I watched that movie like a hundred times. <laughs> you know, that's like one of my favorite movies of all time by far. I mean, First Blood's amazing, but I grew up with Rambo First Blood Part Two. Yeah. Well, to me, is it uh, First Blood because I'm a Vietnam veteran. I want to make it as accurate as possible. Oh yeah. And so by the time they get into Rambo, all of a sudden, you, you know, I, I think Rambo Three is fighting a Russian army with a bow and arrow. Yeah, so not that. First of all, all the action was very real and how veterans were treated at that time and so on that, and so forth. You know, wearing that flag on that jacket, looking the way you do. You're asking for trouble around here, friend. So it tells a very, very true story, right, of history at that time. And once it became that, then he started doing, you know, he's jumping off waterfalls and doing all kinds of things. And so. so would you say... Um, First Blood is your favorite of all the Rambo films? Without question. It's the only one I did. So, <laughs> yes, my favorite. <laughs> well, that, that, that aside, just because it seemed like you liked the more realistic take and it was like a commentary on the yeah. crappy stuff going on in society, how they treated veterans and stuff. And I come back to the world and I see all those maggots at the airport protesting me, spitting, calling me a baby killer and all kinds of vile crap. My, my, you know, my whole ilk of um, filmmaking is to, to make it real, real action, real things, you know. When I drive cars, I have cars driven to me and do crashes and like that. They're very realistic. It wasn't like a car drives off a cliff in a convertible and four people bail out of it and land on top of a moving train and jump off the train and get in boats and then steal wave runners and do a chase. It's not, Wait, so it's you're not saying fine. you don't really like the Fast and the Furious movies is what I'm getting Not at all. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're a little... Um, like comic book movies, right? It's a little over the top and there's not real action. It's just not, you know, and if people like it, bless them, they go enjoy it, whatever like that. But it's uh, it's not who I am, you know? Yeah. I like to make realistic movies in real ways. And What do you think? Oh, that's real. I think so too. In the Rush Hour movies with, the, with Jackie Chan, even as amazing as he is, you know, we still try to keep the action real and believable. Somewhat re you know? realistic, sure, yeah. yeah. Let go! I can't believe I flew 10,000 miles for this shit! And I, and I appreciate that. Those are That's what I actually prefer. Where it's like, yes, it's a movie, but we're not, like, taken out of it. Like, you know, we have our suspension of disbelief intact, 
but there are movies that just take you out, you know, like the, the newer Fast and Furious. You're just like, this is just beyond ridiculous. You know, I, I can't really go on for this ride anymore. <laughs> Also reminded me that uh, uh, Stephen Lambert says in his interview, and I guess in his book, that um, people like Jackie Chan aren't real martial artists. And it's like he's the only real martial artist in the industry, if you listen <laughs> to, the, to the thing. Steven Seagal is not a real um, martial artist. Uh, Jackie Chan isn't. Uh, uh, Van uh, Damme. Van Damme isn't a real martial artist. God bless him. He's not. He's a movie fighter, you know. Same thing with, uh, with with Jackie Chan, you know, or Jet Li, you know, they're movie fighters. Great talents, but they're movie fighters. You bastard! In Stephen Lemmer's defense, he was making the distinction between real fighters and movie fighters. But with that said, I got to double check the book. And you guys should check that book out, though. There's a lot of really cool behind the scenes Hollywood stories in there. It's just like... So he's the one that he can evaluate every other martial artist in the industry. And you need to listen to Steven to find out who's the real guy. <laughs> yeah, you got to buy that book, uh, which is a good read, though. I will admit it's very entertaining. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's some very cool behind the scenes stuff. You know, maybe 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 not the chapter where, you know, he, he talks about you so much. But I think you might appreciate some of the other chapters. <laughs> the, um, the thing is, it's just like. If you look at his resume, you see how many shows that he's on and how many of those were one or two days or a week. You look at mine and as a stunt coordinator, second unit director, I'm on for three and four months at a whack. And yeah, I mean, you're there. The credits whole that I have compared to credits that he has and how many of his jobs were day jobs or a week here and week there. And if he has all this talent capability, why does he have so few credits as a stunt coordinator or a fight choreographer if he's so special? We got to ask him, got to talk to him again, but uh, real quick, Conrad, uh, have you written a book? Are you going to come out with a book? Uh, I am. I'm thinking about it, you know, and I'm just writing notes down and like that. Hopefully that uh, uh, at some point I'll turn up. I get encouraged by a lot of people to do it. I'm encouraging you now. You have to have a crazy amount of stories. Obviously, Stephen Skull working with him, working with Stallone, just and I've seen your IMDb, and like you said, you were basically there on set for the entirety of the shoot, it sounds like, on a lot of this stuff. Yes. So you have all the, I don't and know that, if I want to call them details, including, uh, secrets, uh, all the little details, right? Pre-production prep, right? Post-production editing, so on and so forth. It's just like, I didn't go on a movie and was there for two weeks. I was on for three months, you know? Yeah. Like in the rush hour movies, I spent, you know, four months in, in Paris, you know, prepping and shooting the, the, with, with the rush hour stuff there, right? Same thing, lethal weapons. You know, you have to get on, you have to find the location, you have to sell the location, you have to sell your, you write the action, then you have to sell the action to get the studio to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's $2 million more than we wanted to spend. Yeah, but look how good it is. You know? <laughs> yeah, sure. You're going to make more money in the theater if you do this instead of that. Right? Yeah, you got to get people talking about that. Then then their friends, oh, I got to see that. Let me go to the theater, you know. And when, you, when they advertise movies, what do they show you, right? Is All the stuff you created. And two, yeah, and two cuts of the actor, you know, going, sure. hey, you know, it's and so and so, and hey, whatever, and then boom, crash, boom, bang, right? Yeah. Yeah, you got to come up with a come out with a book. It, it probably with the, the amount of content and stories. I mean, Stephen Lambert's book's like a phone book, right? I oh, think yeah, here's very, very big. It took me like a month to read it, and I was literally reading it for like an hour or more a night. It's like I was in a college exam studying, you know, trying to get sleep. through it for the semester. <laughs> and it puts you to sleep. <laughs> well, you know, on, that's just a joke. Just yeah, a joke. No, it's a good joke. It's a good joke. Honestly, it wouldn't matter what I'm reading at night. Like yeah. the book will fall in my face. You know, I don't know if that happens to you when you're reading, but it just like falls in your face because you're just kind of passing out. But again, it's just because I'm tired, not, not because the book's not good. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, though, I need to get you back on because we almost kind of like touched upon like some stuff uh, just now that, you know, I want to expand on quite a bit, but I, I do want to get word out to the audience uh, and have them, you know, ask a bunch of questions. And I'm going to, sure, right? if IMDb's ever back up, I'm going to study that more and, and look at look at all these just different things. You know, I've grown up a little poor kid out in the San Fernando Valley in Silmar. It was all dirt roads and olive oh, groves. Silmar. And okay, I know where that stumbled is. In, stumbled into the movie business quite by accident. And we got to get and, the details of that. <laughs> and um, it's very uh, amazing how it happened. You know, after coming back from Vietnam and so on and so forth, and then you know having a chance to uh, to work with Natalie Wood 
and she gets to know me when she's say, oh, Connie, how are you today? Oh, nice, Ned, how are you doing? Right? And then she shows up at this party with RJ, her husband at the time. She runs up and gives me, Connie, she gives me a big hug and wraps her legs around me like that. And everybody's looking like, who's that guy? <laughs> I'm going like, Nabby Wood, things like that. And Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton and Lee Marvin and people when I was starting in the business to work with these super, super stars, right? Yeah, that's cool. It's just, um, it's been an uh, amazing, amazing uh, career, you know. That's that's just doesn't happen to a lot of people. I mean, you're like working on with a listers on the, you know, real movies like movies I go to the theater, you know, with real budgets, with real studios, not, not, not these like B grade movies that nobody really remembers, right? Yeah, exactly, like first class, really movie movies, right? Yeah, top of the top, like you mentioned, the Rush Hours, the First Blood, the, the Steven Seagal. And I did a lot of the B movies too, you know, in the Roger Corman days. We did all. We the were, well, a lot of people start with that. Like even James Cameron started there. Like everybody's still got to start. Well, you know, with, with yeah, that. And, and others too. They, they became big stars that Roger Corman gave them their shot and because of Roger, right? All of a sudden, other people notice you, and then you have an opportunity to uh, advance, and that's what happened to me. So. I've uh, been very, very lucky. Of course, you make your own luck. You got to be prepared when the break comes to take advantage. But yeah. Oh, yeah. My favorite quote luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. Seneca, Roman philosopher. I got that written down right here. <laughs> I love that quote. But basically, that is what you just said. 